When you're in the midst of a global pandemic, like we are at the time of this video's recording, it can be a bit difficult to meet up and play board games with your friends. In fact, it's incredibly irresponsible and in a lot of places quite illegal, so please don't do that. But this isn't just a problem of our time. In fact, when I was at university, most of the people I would happily sit around a table and shoot with a cardboard gun were off at their own halls in different parts of the country. Enter Tabletop Simulator, a digital bandage for all of those achy breaky board gameless hearts around the world. Tabletop Simulator from Berserk Games is a physics sandbox specifically designed for playing board games, RPGs, miniature war games, and pretty much anything that you can wrangle into a custom script. Since its release in 2015, Tabletop Simulator has had all sorts of features added to it to make it as in-depth as possible for tabletop players of all kinds. But with a plethora of options comes a relatively steep learning curve, especially for those who don't usually play a lot of video games. With that in mind, here's a big old bundle of tips that will help you stumble through this weird and wonderful tool. Let's start off with the absolute basics. If you've played a lot of PC games in the past, then most of this will probably be pretty straightforward. If not, don't worry, here's the basic controls to get you around the game. You can pan your camera around using the W, A, S and D keys. If you hold your right click and move your mouse or use the arrow keys, you'll rotate the camera around the table. Use the scroll wheel on your mouse or trackpad to zoom in and out of what you're looking at. You can also do this with the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard. Hold the left click button on things you're mousing over to grab them and move them around as you move your mouse. If there's a group of objects, like a deck of cards, then you can grab the top one by left clicking and quickly dragging away, or you can grab the entire stack by holding your left click until the whole group raises in the air. You can also select multiple objects by holding a left click whilst not mousing over anything but the table itself, and then moving your mouse to drag a box around your selections. Finally, right clicking on any object will give you a whole host of options like copy and pasting, shuffling, tinting, searching through decks, and many, many more. Now that you know the basics, there's a number of little keyboard shortcuts that will make your life a lot easier whilst playing. If you press R whilst mousing over a deck or container, you'll shuffle the contents, or doing so with a dice will roll them. Pressing F doesn't just pay respects, you can also use it to flip any object that your mouse is highlighting. The F keys, as in F1, F2 and F3 etc, will quickly switch between the different tools of your hotbar at the top left. Press Q and E to rotate objects that you are holding. Press the plus and minus buttons to enlarge or shrink items that you are holding. And after selecting multiple objects by dragging a box as I said before, or control clicking, and then press G to group them together, which will sort things into categories and stack them up for you neatly. Great for cleaning up. Straight out of the box, Tabletop Simulator is loaded with a good selection of classic parlor games like Backgammon and Chess. You're also set up for playing any kind of classic card game like Poker and Bridge, with a built-in poker table and selection of chips to boot. Tabletop Sim also has a decent selection of generic fantasy monsters and terrain loaded up straight out of the box for you to use in RPG systems like Dungeons and Dragons. You can also use custom image uploads to pull in your character sheets, and selecting multiple dice will show their combined totals, making for a slightly more physical version of your RPG than most online offerings. The monsters your party will face are all available in different states of animation for a little bit of extra immersion, and you can download a whole host of add-ons once you've mastered the next tip. Not to mention that the terrain that you'll be using is all modular, which means that you'll be able to build your own custom maps as you so please. Now we get to the main reason that Tabletop Simulator is such a tantalizing prospect, the Steam Workshop support. For those not in the know, the Steam Workshop is a platform where users can upload swathes of custom content for modular games. Tabletop Simulator has a massive modding community of talented people uploading just about anything that you can think of as a completely free addition to your base purchase. This is where the true power of the game really comes out as you'll be able to grab in depth lovingly created digital versions of your favourite tabletop games in a near instant and they're downloaded as soon as you load them or join someone's game. What's more is you'll be able to upload your own custom mods as well to share with friends or the public. To access the Steam Workshop, you can open the Steam Overlay in-game by pressing Shift and Tab together. In the top right corner, there'll be a link which will take you to the Workshop. From there, you can search to your heart's content for anything that you're interested in. 
If you spot a mod that you'd like to try, it's just a case of hitting the subscribe button on the mods page. From there, Tabletop Sim will download everything that you need for it, and it'll be good to go. To load it up, just go to the Games button at the top of your screen, and they'll be categorized under Workshop. There's a whole host of stuff to sift through, from popular board games to old forgotten classics, miniature wargaming, fun little physics games like mini golf and bowling, and an industrial sized vat of shit posts. If you've enjoyed playing any of the mods on Tabletop Sin, then I heartily recommend that you pick up a physical copy of the games to make sure that the tabletop designers themselves are supported. But in lieu of that, there's also official DLC of some great and well known tabletop games that have been added into Tabletop Sim in tandem with the game designers themselves. Normally when you load anything from your games menu, it'll overwrite whatever you're currently playing and start fresh with the new game that you've selected. If you want to save the current state of your game, or you've got a particular way that you set things up that you don't want to have to repeat each time you load a certain game, you can save your game to load at your leisure. Pretty simple on its own, but Tabletop Simulator has some pretty useful functionality that allows you to combine different saves or mods together. When you're loading something up from the games list, you can instead right click and select additive load to load that mod on top of the one that you're already playing. Slightly chaotic when you're adding two mods together, but great for grabbing individual components from one mod to another, like some custom dice for your RPG session, or a Space Jam VHS tape in your game of us all. You can also save specific objects to load them in later games at your leisure. I like to use this to create war game armies and load them up onto different battle maps. Can't find the mod that you want or itching to get your own designs and ideas onto the virtual table? You can upload custom images, models, dice, cards and what have you either to existing games or into your own custom setup. Great for prototyping your own designs or adding your own flair to RPGs and board games. It's these tools that modders use to create versions of all the board games that you know and love on Tabletop Sim. If you master them, you can start making your own mods as well. A nice and simple one, you can press the tab button at any time to ping a part of the table. It will show up in your player colour to differentiate between different people all pinging at once. This is a really handy tool for teaching new games to your friends when you need to explain parts of a board or point out where certain components live. If you're struggling to read things in your game, you can get an on-screen preview of anything that you mouse over by holding the Alt key or Option key on the MacBook. Once it's up, you can also scroll with your mouse wheel or trackpad to increase the size of the preview. You can also hold Alt and Shift to peek at the underside of an object or card, which is handy for taking sneak peeks at hidden information without having to drag it into your hand to avoid showing other players. For an extra pro tip, you can create little cameras to keep a constant track of objects on the table with the screen within screen feature. Place your camera in a way that you want to keep it, Open up a new screen within screen and lock it to that position. Then you can go on your merry way and that section of the screen will give you a constant preview of what's going on on that part of the table. Great for scoreboards. It's almost inevitable that as soon as you invite a big group of players into a room, you'll probably witness something like this. You can set how many and which permissions players have by hitting the permissions button up here to stop them from doing things like drawing, flicking or loading in objects that you don't want in your game. On the reverse side, you can also right click a name in the top right corner of the screen to promote one of your players. This will allow them all permissions and allow them to load in mods if they've subscribed to something that you haven't already or if they've got the save from your last game. Great for hidden roll games, your players can press the B key at any time to blindfold themselves and be incapable of seeing anything happening on the screen. When any player puts on or takes off a blindfold, you'll get a little notification in the chat, but these notifications are only visible to people who have their blindfolds off. This allows someone to check that everyone is blindfolded and also notifies you that players have taken theirs off if you're trying to reveal to other players that you're on the same team. RPGs and board games are always better with a little thematically appropriate music and ambience, and that's a wheels guarantee. But by using the music button at the top of the screen, you'll be able to load custom MP3s into your game and set up playlists to broadcast to players. If you don't have any music of your own though, or if you just haven't downloaded it, then there's plenty available via the MP3 player tool in your objects browser. This little knockoff iPod has a whole host of stock music in different genres to add a little ambience to your online games night. 
If that's still not enough, then let me introduce you to the tablet. This knockoff iPad is a fantastic way of accessing anything online for all your players to see with its built-in browser. Access rulebooks online, check forums for clarifications, or load up YouTube, SoundCloud, or any other media site to get video and audio for your games. You can even use this to play a walkthrough or review for your players to prep them for the game night. At the top of your screen, the rather innocuous looking notebook has some pretty useful functionality. It's a great place for storing rules, and if the modders haven't scanned the rulebook itself, they'll often copy the rules text into this part of the notebook. Underneath the rules section though, there is a series of notebooks, some public and some locked to the relevant player. These can be used to keep a shared pool of notes, or some secret notes that are only visible to you and you alone. At any point, the hosts of a game in Tabletop Simulator can assign themselves or another player to different colours around the table. Sometimes this is just a matter of preference, but oftentimes mod will be set up to be played with a specific colour for positioning or in-game rules that require certain colours in-game. There's one role though that's different from the rest. The Game Master role allows you complete omniscience over the players around the tables. You'll be able to read their notebooks, see their hands, and into any hidden zone, regardless of what colour it is. This is perfect for a Game Master role in RPGs, or for hidden role games, and has plenty of other options as well. Tabletop Simulator is a lifesaver in these uncertain times, but a dog isn't just for Christmas, and Tabletop Sim isn't just for apocalyptic pandemics. There's plenty of life in this charming little simulator, and it should definitely be in your repertoire for long distance gaming. Thanks very much for watching this video, if you've enjoyed what you've seen then be sure to hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment with some of your best TTS tips. Be sure to head on over to dicebreaker.com for the latest and greatest in everything tabletop, or maybe click on one of the videos on screen now for another bit of content here on the Dicebreaker YouTube channel. Thanks very much for watching and have a lovely day.